Welcome back to our channel. I'm Bella Luna. I'm part of a trio of witches known as Witchy Witchies. We do a podcast and we do this YouTube channel. If you are new to our channel, stick around, check us out. If you like what you see, give us a like and subscribe. Click on that notification button so you can get all of our latest and greatest videos. This is our last video on the sex magic series. And in this video, I'm going to go over doing ritual with sex magic. Now, regardless of the type of magical system that you use, you'll find that many of those systems use some form of ritual with the sex magic practice. So unless you are part of something formal, traditional, say like Thelema or some other ceremonial magic or high magic practice or some tradition, then you obviously can choose whether or not you want to incorporate ritual. Those of us who are not generally part of a traditional practice or, or perform high magic ceremonies, we do tend to use ritual anyways. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give you kind of an overview and some ideas of things that you can do and things that you can think about if you choose to incorporate ritual in your sex magic practice. So one of the things to consider when it comes to sex magic, the ritual aspect versus regular sex, is that in sex magic, the ritual is really where the majority of the focus is on. Whereas in regular sex, it's on the physical feelings and the excitement and the eroticism of it all. So the first thing that you want to think about is your physical space. Where is this ritual going to be conducted? Where is the whole practice of the sex magic ritual going to be conducted? And so once you choose your location, then you want to, of course, cleanse that space. You want to cleanse it, obviously, from a physical perspective because you also want to be an area that's comfortable and that's inviting, but you also want to do some magical cleansing as well. So just like you would cleanse your space for any kind of working that you would be doing. The other thing that you want to think about is ambiance. So some people like the thought of having music on to set the mood. So in this particular case, you're not just setting the mood, you're also setting the mood for the ritual and incorporating the ritual aspects. So when you think about using music, you want to be very particular in what you're choosing. In this instance, you're not necessarily choosing something that's romantic. You're choosing something that preferably is not going to have any words to it. Because generally when you play songs during a magical practice that has words to it, it can often distract you or perhaps it's all of the words are not meaningful to what you're doing. So if you do choose to use music that has words to it, really be very careful in choosing one that all of the lyrics really has meaning towards your working. Also, when choosing your music, and the source for your music, make sure that you're choosing something that is not going to be interrupted by, say, ads or DJs or anything like that. You want it to be continuous because any kind of break in the music may also cause a disruption to your focus or your concentration. The other thing that you want to consider are what items do you want to have around? So, Think about what you would have in a normal ritual. Perhaps you would have some candles, some incense. Perhaps you have some statues, some icons, some figurines. So think about those things where you want to place them as well. So if you are concerned with elements and having those energies present, again, think about your specific location and have those arranged accordingly. The other thing in terms of items is, are the items going to be part of your working? For instance, are you trying to charge a talisman? Are you using a sigil or perhaps some runes or a bind rune? So make sure that those are not only present, but they are 
where you will be able to see them during the whole process. So you don't want to have to look around the room or reach over and grab it when you need it, that it's ready within reach and within your sight at all times. The other thing you want to take under consideration is if you, again, going back to the elements, if you're looking to incorporate the elements, then you may also want to consider also positioning yourself so that you're facing in the direction that corresponds to the element that you're wanting to incorporate. And then lastly, you may want to consider establishing protection and some way to contain your energy. So when it comes to laying a compass or casting circle, as with any other type of working, that's obviously your choice. But again, you want to take that under consideration and you want to make sure that you plan for that because if you do choose to do that, then you want to make sure that you're going to capture the whole space where all of that activity is occurring. So now that we have your space ready for the ritual, you want to now focus on your body and prepare your body. So again, going back to just like you would perhaps prepare yourself for any ritual, you want to cleanse yourself. So if you are taking a cleansing bath, a, a ritual bath, or even a shower, you want to visualize that any kind of negativity or stress or angst towards what, what you're about to do is washing away and going down the drain as it's washing off your body. And after you do your ritual bath, then you want to take a moment and relax, gather your thoughts, and get yourself in a state where you are going to be ready for ritual. And again, I have to really put emphasis on, yes, you're about to have a physical encounter with somebody, but the focus really is on a ritual. So get yourself in that mindset and ready for that. When you're ready to begin the ritual, if you're about to do so with a partner or several people, then you may want to consider doing some preliminary things before you get started. And so some really simple, easy techniques are doing some breathing exercises with each other and trying to do maybe some synchronized breathing where you are breathing in and out at the same time or taking turns so as you breathe in, the other person is breathing out and vice versa. It basically, this helps you not just to relax, but also to connect and get yourself connected with each other on a spiritual level as well. During the sex magic ritual itself, I just want to make a note on the orgasm. So if you remember my video on monofocal, duofocal, and polyfocal, when it comes to orgasm, it does tend to be the end result and the focus when you're doing monofocal and duofocal. But when you're doing polyfocal, orgasm is not necessarily always reached. And so that's something to bear in mind and to not necessarily be disappointed or feel like it's a failure if, say, especially if you're in a group situation and you yourself personally have not reached orgasm. However, when you are doing it with yourself especially, or with just you and another person, then the orgasm certainly is going to be more of a focus in terms of what is going to be activating your spell work. And so some of the things that you, some, some techniques that some people think about to do is to control the orgasm. And I know that sounds kind of strange, but in other words, when you feel that you are about to have an orgasm, to try to refrain and hold back and then bring yourself again to the brink and then refrain and hold back and do that a few times so that the theory is when you do finally reach orgasm, it is an explosion of energy that you are releasing. If you're doing a duofocal or a polyfocal 
sex magic ritual, then immediately after the ritual is done, take a moment and don't just get up and walk away. And this is for many different reasons. You know, uh, there's the obvious, you know, you don't want to just act like a one night stand and get up and go. But the other is you have created this atmosphere where you have literally opened up your chakras, your energy is swirling around you. And so the there's still a lot of energy despite, you know, what you have circulating that is activated for your spell. There's still a lot of excess energy. And so take just a little bit of a, of a couple of moments to allow you and your partner or partners to reabsorb some of that energy back. Otherwise, you will be probably even more tired than you would usually be after a ritual. And then lastly, when all is said and done, in particular, if you've reached orgasm, or if that was the goal to reach orgasm, those sexual fluids are quite potent. So don't ignore that. It is not uncommon for people to use the sexual fluids that have been generated through that process to also be used to charge a physical item. So if you are charging a tal talisman during this process, you would anoint it with some of your sexual fluids. If you have a sigil, if you have a photo that you, you've had, that's when you would want to then grab it and then anoint that photo, anoint that sigil, anoint that symbol with your sexual fluids. You can also draw the same symbol on your body part or on whatever you think is relevant to your working. Now, one thing that some people do choose to do, granted, this is something that I ask you to think about very carefully, uh, and that is to consume it. And again, if you're going to do that, make sure, number one, you are really very comfortable knowing who your partner is. There's no sexually transmitted diseases. If it's yourself, obviously, you know yourself. Uh, you know, I'm not trying to make this gross or anything, but it, it, some people do actually maybe just put a drop or two in a glass of wine and then consume the wine because consuming, again, that very potent and very heavily magically charged fluid can really make a world of difference and, and give such a, a, an oomph to the working that you just did. So when you are completely done, and if you have cast circle, then this is the time that you would open your circle. If you are one of those who do a banishing afterwards, then you would do that. So basically the same thing that you would do at the end of any ritual that you would normally do is what you would do to wrap up and, and close everything off. So with that, I hope that I gave you guys some ideas to use again, unless you're part of a formal tradition or follow a very particular practice, the ritual is for all intents and purposes, a choice on your part. As I said, many of us do choose to incorporate ritual with sex magic. And so even if you're not sure, give it a shot. See if it is something that you would like to do. It really does tend to really increase the potency of the whole experience altogether. So give it a try, see if it's something that you like. And with that, thank you so much once again for joining us. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you on the next video. If you haven't yet, head to Amazon so you can get our latest book series. It's four books on 101 ideas for the practicing witch. 101 oil blends for spells and rituals, 101 herbs for your magic practice, we have a book for 101 different types of divination, and 101 tips for the new witch.
These books are beginner friendly, but hopefully you will find some new and unique ideas and things in there that you wouldn't see in a typical beginner's book. Oh!